Welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden. Thanks for joining me on our weekly foray into the field. Adventure, camaraderie, and beautiful places. Plus, of course, lots of great dog work, right? All right, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Great show in store for you. I'm going to share some of the things I've learned the hard way so you don't have to about road trips. What to do, how to do it, why to do it. A little philosophy, a few stories. And we're going to talk about, uh, well, your own suggestions, you and your fellow hunters suggestions about must-have gear. So if you want to start the season right, take advantage of my 30 years of, um, well, making mistakes. I guess that's what they call experience these days. It'll pay off all season for you. On top of that, we'll take a look at some uh, bird forecasts for Nevada and Missouri. You have a chance to win a Pete boot dryer. Keep those entries coming in our new Upland Nation Puzzler quiz. And it's all made possible by our friends at Rufflin Performance Kennels. Happy Jack Dog Care Products here on South Dakota's Ringneck Nation and Dr. Tim's Natural Performance Dog Food. To kick it off, uh, let me remind you that uh, if you're not carrying some Sage and Breaker Gun Care Products this season, well, you're probably working too hard. Sageandbreaker.com is where you learn more about all of their stuff, tools, uh, I'll call them uh chemicals for lack of a better term but great non-toxic chemicals including their clp i don't leave home without that sign up for the mailing list you'll get first crack at all the new stuff when it comes out including that new shotgun case sageandbreaker.com and if you're heading somewhere on a road trip you might consider taking a detour or making it your primary destination that is Huron, South Dakota, my favorite destination in that wonderful state. They call it the Ringneck Nation for a reason. If you want to learn more about it, huntheronsd.com. Go there, sign up for the free hunting information packet loaded with stuff on the 140,000 acres of public access within Beetle County. It's all right there for you. More birds than people in HuntHuronSD.com. And without further ado, we're going to take a look at the things that uh, that may help you as you wind your way uh, around your state, uh, across the county, or across the country for that matter. Things that uh, have paid off for me in the past, and yeah, I've talked about them here and there. You've seen a little bit of it on Wing Shooting USA, the TV show, and and you've read about it in various places, but. You know, just a, it's a good time of year to remember all this stuff and how important it is to stop and smell the wild roses once in a while. Here's some practical stuff, some um, less practical stuff. I called it philosophical in the introduction. Whatever it is to you, it is certainly worth taking a look at. I'll never forget <laughs> racing back from a meeting at uh, the Cavella's World Headquarters back when there was such a thing in Sydney, Nebraska heading through these tiny towns on these small county roads in rural Nebraska, headed for rural Colorado, I think. And we stopped somewhere along the way because the dogs had to take a leak, and maybe their owner did too. And one of those great spots that you hadn't planned on, didn't know about, but there it is right in front of me. There is a wildlife management area along the road in this, you know, just outside this little tiny town, which by the way, was one of those towns at the time that was giving you a building lot in town. If you just move there, please move there and become a tax paying citizen. I wonder if they're still doing that. 
it's it might be happening more and more these days now that I think about it. But anyway, we stopped at this wildlife management area. There was a good parking place and nobody there. And uh, so I turned the dogs loose. We're walking along the edge of this area because it's it, there's a fence and a cornfield on the other side. And uh, just getting a leg stretch and emptying all of our, uh, well, internal reservoirs. Well, um, <clears throat> I can't find Flick. And pretty soon I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And there, there he is. He's on point right on the edge of that corn. Yes, indeed. And you know what it was? No, it was not. It was a sharp tail. Yes. It was. Um, anyway, pleasant surprise. One of the many things that happens when you do stop and gaze at the corn or smell the wild roses or anything else. You know how those long, grueling trips go. They test everything from organizational skills to your dog's stamina. But sometimes it's the, you know, the little things, the devil in the details things that uh, most affect uh, not not only the productivity of your hunt, but the memories of, uh, of that trip and uh, what you share with everybody else. So if you're planning a trip, here are some things that you might take a look at. Um, and if you haven't yet, please watch the video on this one. I've got an extensive video. It's at it, it's at my YouTube channel and virtually everywhere else you can watch outdoor videos. There really is a place for everything. And if you put everything in its place, life just goes better. Back in the Boy Scouting days, you know, you had a backpack and uh, you're going for eight or ten days. You're going to put the same stuff in the same place all the time. Well... Your backpack is now a little bit bigger and it's got an internal combustion engine, but it's still your, I, I guess I'll call it your bur bread and butter. Um, so load your rig correctly the first time, leave it loaded correctly, and life will become a little bit simpler. If you don't have to think about, ah, where is that dog bowl? Or did I leave a leash here? Where is that? where's my ammo? I got a gun, but I, all those things, the video explains a lot more about it. And I'm not going to go into detail here, but, uh, put stuff in the same place that, um, every time you use it or leave it there for, for all I know, that's what I do all season. I leave all that stuff in there and, um, and put it according to, you know, place all the things together that you're going to use for a particular task. For example, when I'm feeding the dogs, I've got other things that I add to their food, um, from supplements to uh, little dog canned food just to get them to eat sometimes. All that stuff is in the same place. I don't have to go chasing it here and uh, trying to dig it out of there. Same for all the shooting stuff, same for all the dog control stuff, the crate, the leash, the tie-out stake, all those things are in the same place. And of course, that goes for your hunting vest as well. It's just wonderful. And I'll never forget, I was hunting in um, Kentucky at a hunting preserve many years ago. The same thing, but in a different context. Marvin uh, was hunting with us, just a guest at the lodge. But I said, hey, we're going to go out and do this. You want to come with us? He said, yeah, sure. So he did. But what I admired about this guy, number one, a great shot. Number two, we had a wonderful time. And number three, this guy knew his gun inside and out. You probably know somebody like that, or maybe you were in the service and there was a point in time when you had to be able to take your gun apart and put it back together blindfolded or in the dark or something. This guy knew it. I mean, I just watched him. It was like an art form. This guy... He knew how to load. He shot a semi-auto, um, so it was a little more complicated than what I do. But he knew where everything was and how to put it back and where to put his ammo and how to shoot and how, everything about that gun he knew intimately. Same for your truck, same for your dog, for that matter, and all the stuff you need to have a great hunt. Um, speaking of stuff, a uh, quick reminder, um, if you are interested... And I haven't talked about this yet. This season, the Ultimate Upland Checklist is available. Yep, it's two pages full of stuff. Some you may need all the time. Some you may need once a season. 
It's a pretty darn long list. In fact, somebody said to me at a seminar last year, you know, you forgot one thing on that list, the semi-truck you'll need to haul it with. But if you're looking for a starting point, it's downloadable. Find it at findbirdhuntingspots.com. Just search for it, Ultimate Upland Checklist at findbirdhuntingspots.com. I will talk a little bit more about gear as we get rolling here. I have all of your suggestions coming up here on the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, your host. We're just getting warmed up around here. Number two on my list is taking care of your dog on the road. Now, I've written about this. I've done a couple videos on this. Again, watch those for all the details. But here is my chance to just remind you that your dog needs to work really hard when you get where you're going. Now, he will do that when he is relaxed, rested, happy, confident, all that comes from maintaining his routine. Yeah, sure, you may be getting up earlier, you may be driving a long distance, but if you can, help your dog do all of his things in about the same time frame as he usually does. Feed him at the same time, maybe you stop every couple hours because he has to get out and exercise a little bit regular waking and bedtime hours. You know, I even try to do a few training drills once in a while on the road. Nothing complicated, but a few things here and there just to keep him sharp. Bring the food and water from home, a familiar crate to sleep in with familiar bedding. All of those things will keep your hunting partner on uh, an even keel. So that um, when it is time to drop the tailgate and turn him loose, that's the best and most pleasant surprise. Not many others, just that. Not many others, that's for sure. Um, I talk very little about this, but I, I'm, I'm writing about it more and more, and I, I think it's really important. And I want to thank Tad and Lynn, my TV crew, for a lot of this. These guys are... Not only, well, they're not the producers, so they don't have to worry about all that stuff, but they do love to have a little fun here and there. Everything from the little jokes to the to the detours we've taken over the years on the way to and from some of our destinations. And um, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's slightly less great, but it's always a good time, and I will never regret it, even the time... <laughs> Even the time we went to the Badlands in South Dakota, had a wonderful tour, saw some incredible stuff. Then we stopped at 1880s Town on the same route, heading for, where were we heading for? Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and the airport there, because these guys had to catch a flight, and then I was going on to something else. Yeah, we missed the flight. Lucky for them and all their gear there was another one the only other one of the day leaving in a couple hours so we all learned our lesson there but it was well worth the trouble if you've not been to the badlands before believe me take a look and speaking of that sort of thing one of the other places i love and i drive almost everywhere when i'm when i'm hunting these days because i can bring more dogs more guns and more other stuff and then quite often the guys and all of their production gear but anyway um, never forget the one day I got to spend in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. I think that's in North Dakota. Um, incredible place. Uh, just like most national parks, there's a gateway town um, that is um, kind of fascinating in many ways. Medora is the name of that place. Got some history there, a lot of Roosevelt history. Yes, he did live in that country, and if you haven't read his biography yet, you need to do that. Um, all about that country in large part. Buffalo, all sorts of other wildlife, incredible scenery. Um, it's one of those places you really need to see. That It's off the beaten track. It doesn't get the, the great press that some of those other places get. Well worth a visit. Some of the other things we've done on road trips, uh, I won't bore you with, but 
quite often you'll run into somebody who knows somebody you know. And if you've got a dog in the back of your truck, that's usually all you need. You pull up to a gas station or you stop at a cafe and somebody says, what's that dog? Blah, blah. Tell, tell, tell me about that dog. Oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, I do. He bred that dog to this, whatever it is. It always happens. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Allow enough time in your schedule to have some of those short and long detours. Believe me, hunting is about more than killing birds. And all of that other stuff comes from allowing, opening the door to opportunities like that. One more on that regard because it has paid off for me over and over again. Speaking of gas stations, so way back when I was still a whippersnapper and uh, and willing to experiment quite a bit and not knowing much about some of these places, I was in a small town that's since become my second home, population 10 when I arrived there, um, filling up the gas tank at the uh, combination post office gas station cafe general store and two-room motel guy pulls up on the other side of the pumps gets out he admires my dog i admire his dog get to talk and realize we've talked on the phone a few times He's a writer over there. I'm a sort of writer. You can decide that for yourself. But uh, he knew me. I knew him from reputation, if nothing else. And we were complaining about the lack of birds. It was a very hot weekend and early in the season. We couldn't find any chuckers anywhere. He said, well, listen, I don't tell a lot of people about this place. But if you go to this place at this time, the birds will be on the north-facing slope walking down to that creek with that secret name to get their water for the afternoon and i thought you know i've heard these stories before and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not so good but the rate things are going i'm going to try it so we did dave and i trundled up to that spot got geared up started walking right at the correct time and as if they were wearing digital watches we are gobsmacked by a line of chuckers heading down to the water, hopping over the little edge and jumping down to get a drink and then turning around and marching right back up, almost like an assembly line. It was hilarious. Yeah, we did shoot a couple out of that, but more because of the wonderful dog work than anything else. Thank you everybody who's helped me and you probably have a few of those stories yourself so we'll get some more of this going um in just a minute i'm going to take a quick uh gulp of water here you just uh do the same if you like but i'll be back to you again in about 20 seconds in the meanwhile this is the upland nation podcast i'm scott linden your host thanks for listening actually got some coffee instead might regret that i made it myself but uh, here we go speaking of that sort of thing you know all the stuff that's important to you all all the time at home is really important to you on the road Uh, maybe more so your immune system is uh, taxed you're not getting near the sleep you might be imbibing a little bit more often than you should or you no no that's a judgment you might be imbibing more than you usually do. So take your vitamins, eat carefully when you can, try and get enough sleep and drink plenty of water. Yeah, I know I sound like your mother, but the last thing you need is to catch a bug or be less than your physical best. You know that chucker story I just told you? Well, I was leaving that same location a few years later and uh, and you know, you know you're driving and, and you realize, man, I am so thirsty. If you've gotten to that point, by the way, <clears throat> you're beyond thirsty, you're dehydrated. Uh, but that's what it was. And I didn't stop until I got to my next destination. It is a river in eastern Oregon that I have come to love and uh, enjoyed and shared with a whole bunch of other people over the years. By the time I got there, I was so beat. 
I, and I thought I was coming down with something. I was so beat. Here I was in a spot where if somebody said, Scott, I want to give you $1,000 if you limit out on chuckers and valley quail and then maybe pop a pheasant at the same time. That's the place I go. And yet I was so tore up. I went to bed. I slept 14 hours, got up, and realized that the reason I had been so beat is because I hadn't been hydrating the whole time. You know what it's like. You're on a hunt. You you maybe don't bring enough water uh, or you're a really good dog owner and you're sharing most of it with him. Whatever it is, stay hydrated so that you can get up the next morning, walk that first canyon, find an arrowhead, and then shoot a limit of valley quail. Oh, and a couple chuckers too. Thank you to the golden eagle that was at the top of that canyon because he kept all the birds on the ground. And my dog had a stellar day. It all happens because of all the stuff we can't or don't or won't or will never know about but there are things we can control, and that's one of them. I talk a lot about smelling the wild roses, but all of these things are important. When you're stopping along the way, find safe places to put your dogs out. You know, don't just walk them away from the gas pumps and hope that they'll lift their leg. Find better places than that. Even if it's just for a few minutes, I will almost always detour four or five minutes off the main highway to find a relaxing setting. It could be a church parking lot. It could be a fairgrounds, a school when school's not in, a park, a museum. Uh, all of those places are way better places to get out and let your dog walk around, even if it's on a leash. But if if it's even better, it's it's at a place like I know in a small town in Washington that has a pretty darn good little league field. Hey, I built enough Little League fields over the years. I will take my dog, and I will use one with a clear conscience. I will still clean up afterwards, and if I did anything that was questionable, I would be, well, I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't happen. You know, you find a great field. If it's fenced, all the better. Those are the places for your dog to get out and relax a little bit, not at a roadside rest area where the semis are blowing through. There's all sorts of other people. Who knows what's on the ground to eat or infect your dog? Give your dog a break. You wouldn't go there if you were a dog. Take his needs into consideration. And then you never know what's going to happen. If you're willing to just dial down your pace a little bit, um, ever tell you this story? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, I was in no rush, kind of coming back to a town in South Dakota. And um, so without a rush, without any need to get anywhere at any given time, I hit a four-way stop. And you know how those rural roads are. They're all you know, straight lines and 90 degree angles because they're going around full sections, square miles. I hit that four-way stop. Up to the four-way stop on my right comes another pickup with a dog trailer. So I'm thinking, oh, hey, good. Good to see another hunter out here. I hadn't seen one. Um, he waves me through, even though he got there first. Uh, I wave him through just being a nice guy with nowhere better to go. Pretty soon, I realized neither of us are going to go until the other guy does. So I just shut off the engine, go over and start talking with him. It turns out he asked me what I'm doing. I said, well, you know, I've been hunting all this public ground around here. Here's a blue spot. Here's a blue spot. In fact, I'm going to that one right there. And he said, well, why? And I said, well, it's public access. It's right there. It's on the way back to town. He says, well, how about that spot? And I said, yeah, I'd love to hunt that spot. It's way better looking. He says, well, come on, it's mine. We spent the rest of the day hunting there, shot my first black pheasant. I know it was probably a refugee from a preserve, but there were no preserves within 10 miles of there. So maybe not. In fact, the first time it got up, I thought it was a skunk when we, when we got the first point on that thing. We left it alone and cleared out, and then it flew away. But we chased it down and found it again. Anyway, all of those things happen when you're not in a rush. And that leads me to my final observation, and that is celebrate however you want to. Don't forget, most people in this world never get to do the things we get to do. 
They never get to hang with friends in beautiful places and watch their dogs work their ass off for us. Okay. And for themselves as well. And the chance maybe to get a couple birds in their mouth and inhale that incredible birdie smell. But uh, you should breathe deep as well. However you celebrate, take the time to do it. It doesn't take a long time, but it does take the time. I got a kind of tradition in the making here. I, I almost always carry a bottle of single malt in the back of my truck. In the back, no, don't get on me for that. And when we are done for the day, the first thing we do is, of course, water the dogs, make sure they're safe, put them up, put the guns away, and then break out the Glenfiddich or the Bruchladic or whatever else I found that I haven't had before. And we'll just sit on the tailgate and toast the day. That's how we do it. You may have another way, and I've asked you that on Facebook once in a while. However you do it, do it. And do it soon after, because that's when all the memories are starting to soak in good friend of mine now was a brand new acquaintance at the time he had been lamenting on facebook how he couldn't get any help training his dog he lives so far away and i said david from the from the pictures you put up on your facebook page i have a feeling i know exactly where you live he said i think you do next time i was down there we met had a couple beers decided the next day we're going to go for a hunt together david showed me some of his i showed him some of mine we traded notes. We had some fun. At the end of that day, we end, we ended that day in the yard of the ranch he cowboyed on, chasing quail. And there we sat as we watched the sunset with an old, old single malt from Isla that uh, was his first and has become one of my favorites since. But the point being, wow. Memories are made of a lot more than just a full game bag. Bird hunting puts us in beautiful places with good friends and loyal dogs. Take time to acknowledge that, and you'll be a better person for it. And who knows, you might even shoot better. Okay, quick break for you. I still got to work here, and if you will, please uh, pay close attention. I'll be back with uh, some of the things I must take every time I go, and then your suggestions about all the things that you take as well. It's all coming up right here on the Upland Nation podcast. That coffee is not getting any better, no matter how old it is. But uh, this part of the podcast is brought to you in part by HappyJackInc.com. The stress of hunting season is tough on everybody, but don't let it get to your dogs. Protect every aspect of his health. Pad coat for his pads, seal and heal for cuts and scrapes, DD33 for fleas and ticks. It's all available at happyjackinc.com. That's happyjackinc.com. Save yourself a trip to the vet. Most of the problems you face, well, that your dog faces, can be dealt with with a product or two from Happy Jack. Take a long look at their website, happyjackinc.com. And cannot wait for some of the newer gear that's coming my way from my friends Elisa and Doug at RoughlandKennels.com. That's RoughlandKennels.com. From the stacking components you can put on top of their performance crates to the bowls, the water holes they call them, to all the other things choices when it comes to the doors for example on your performance crate it's all available now and it's all in one place roughlandkennels.com yeah 
on Facebook a week or two ago, I asked everybody to tell me uh, what they bring that maybe other people haven't thought about bringing just in case. And I appreciate all the, uh, all the participation from everybody out there. So I'm going to jump into those in just a moment. First, some of mine, since nobody else brought these up. These simply make my life better, especially on a multi-day hunt. I'm giving one away. Just stick around. Answer the Upland Nation puzzler question. My Pete boot dryer. You know, I fell in love with these, well, before I had TV shows. So I was doing field and stream and outdoor life radio. And uh, at a SHOT Show one year, I, I actually met Mr. Pete. Shook his hand and said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So learn more. Uh, just go to their site and learn why boot dryers are so incredible. I'm uh, prone to leg cramps for a whole bunch of reasons. The first is I'm as bad as everybody else when it comes to hydration. So I bring a couple things along with me. I add to my water this, um, uh, remember plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Um, this one is noon, N U. You in. It's the same kind of thing. You drop these tablets into your water. It fizzes up. Lots of electrolytes in there to help you avoid leg cramps. And if that doesn't work, I take a lot of magnesium. And then uh, I'm a weightlifter too. So uh, I'm also using a lot of creatine and branched chain amino acids. Those all seem to work for me. If you've got a problem with leg cramps, that is one way to take take the misery out of the you know that it, sh- it always comes at 2 30 in the morning doesn't it yeah this is one way to uh, uh minimize that to say the least and then do a little stretching before you go to bed that helps a lot too mentioned my cowboy friend out there in that place i can't describe because we don't need any more people there like i said the population is nine um David's one of those guys who reminds me that there's more to life than just a plain old bandana. Get yourself a big one. Go to one of the Western stores. Some of the feed stores will have them. The big ones, no other material but silk. No, don't use that phony stuff or don't use cotton. Get a good silk bandana. So many uses for that thing. Um, You will be glad I said get a bandana. Okay, enough from me, and let me remind you one more time, because it it is full of that kind of stuff. Uh, The Ultimate Upland Checklist, go get it. It's at findbirdhuntingspots.com. Let's get into some of your suggestions. Jim Quinn says, every year we buy two cheap, sharp knives and a cheap, nonstick frying pan. I get it. Good, good idea and then at the end of the year uh, hey maybe you recycle them don't you okay whatever anyway great idea if you got a camp um a chuck box and i boy i miss mine thank you chuck adams for making it 40 years ago for me it finally rattled apart and chuck is no longer with us but he's probably making chuck boxes for everybody else up there in heaven joel witt says First aid gear for dogs and people. Yeah, I hope so. An ample supply of water and a bowl, food and treats. And then, as they say, the job's not over till the paperwork's done. Bring toilet paper. It's in my survival kit now. I I shouldn't call it a survival kit. I don't. When I write about it, I call it the 10 essentials, and then I add toilet paper. Uh, But it's one of those things, uh, you know, you can't have enough of that. Enough said. My good friend and incredible woodcarver Lance Larson says, I could list a lot of things. It would differ depending on the area you live in. Always bring, okay, I told you we'd talk philosophy here. Lance, as an artist, of course, he's going to do that. He says, always bring a flexible attitude with you and your dogs and your shotgun and shells. Bring lots of shells. (laughs) Thanks, Lance. Always room in the truck for more attitude if it's the right kind. We worry a lot if we hunt multiple days uh, about our dog in the field and performance. And um, some people call it low blood sugar. There's a lot of other names for it. I have been corrected. 
dogs can have low blood sugar, but they can also just have um, basically run out of fuel in the tank. So Brandon Murphy says he brings honey packets for for the humans and the dogs just in case. I got no problem with that. I'm I'm to the point where I'm using uh, a fat based snack for the for Flick. Uh, you know I've done a lot of research on this. Still flexible, but a lot of research leads me to believe that the low volume, high fat snacks are the best. And for me, I'm experimenting this season with egg yolks and coconut milk. Nothing but fat. Now, we shouldn't be doing that. Hey, enough about my waistline. But the dogs fuel themselves with fat. Short-term energy comes from fat, not from simple carbohydrates like for humans. So just learn a little bit more about that. And because, yeah, no, don't put your egg yolks in the vest unless they're inside something else first. <laughs> Stephen Foster, I feel your pain. I have almost been there, haven't done it. I've left behind my fly rods, my wallet, my tent, my sleeping bags, and probably a few other things, but I've never done what you suggest, and that is forget the dogs. I guess it could happen, you know, depending on, you know, your mood and your rush. Remember, we're not going to rush anymore. We're going to be prepared and we're going to take our time. And then before we do anything like start the engine, take a deep breath and reconnoiter the truck. Mark Maragani says, a whistle. It's always in the other truck yeah it's just like everything else that's why i only have one now works out just dandy for me but another whistle i you know i i bet i have whistles in four different locations just in case what's your favorite by the way i used to like those p-less whistles that the spaniel guys use but i just couldn't get the distance out of them now i'm back to the old um that orange one um that uh, most trainers use uh Gosh, I wish I could remember the name. But anyway, get yourself a good whistle, maybe two or four, and make sure they're always in the right truck. Ken Ammon, we're back to the philosophy side of things, and I'm okay with that. Bring a good attitude and everything else you could stuff into your rig. And then he's he's got a picture there, and it, yeah. Uh, by the way, I just, I ordered another pair of boots. Just in, I like to have an extra, extra, extra and Ken's got an extra pair of boots there. He's got a great dog box. And then he's got what looks to me like a very old bottle of single malt. In fact, I probably ought to look a little closer. If that's one that I haven't had before, I'm going to have to go get one. And Ken also asks about that uh, the drawer system and platform that I have in the back of my truck. You've seen it in every truck for about 15 years, I'm sure. My friends at Truck Vault, truck vault make that. Um, Al Chandler and uh, the crew over there have done a great job for me over the years. If you are looking for a great storage system that literally lives up to its name, nobody's going to break into this thing. I leave my guns in it overnight anywhere. Truck Vault is where you find that. David Brebner, philosopher in residence, says, bring some unending optimism and I will, and that's probably a great place to close it out. Yeah, enjoyed all of your feedback on that. If you got more ideas, we'll be talking about gear and stuff like that over the next few months because it's top of mind for all of us now, isn't it? Uh, so um, thank you for that. I've got more coming up. M Missouri, let's see, Nevada, bird forecasts. The Upland Nation Puzzler, it's all coming up right after this. It all starts with diet. No, not for us, but it almost always starts with the diet for us too, but for our dogs. You know, if you're not feeding well, feeding right, all year your dog is just not going to perform this season so while it's never too late to start i hope you've already glommed on to dr tim's natural performance dog food 
D-R-T-I-M-S is where you learn more, D-R-T-I-M-S dot com. Everything from where his ingredients come from, why he chooses the ingredients he uses. Dr. Tim Hunt is a veterinarian and a sled dog racer. The guy knows about performance. He's got multiple formulations depending on what you need out of your dog. Flick is using the Momentum formula. That's got 35% protein, 25% fat, and the guy looks like a freaking pro wrestler. He is in such good shape, and it proves itself every time he's in the field. Learn all about what's important in fats and why various sources of various types of fats are critical to your dog's performance. Get 30% off your first order. Use the code Upland Nation. Free delivery right to your door. D-R-T-I-M-S dot com. The big news this time of year is all about bird counts. So if you're headed for Nevada or Missouri, I've got some news for you. Missouri's all about quail and man, do they do a good job of it. Why can't we all have a quarter percent sales tax go into wildlife management, but they do in Missouri and it, it proves itself every year. The bad news roadside counts of Bob white quail are down 50% from last year. The good news is there are several areas where the numbers were way up. Yeah. Generally speaking, those places are the Northwest, the North Central, and no, no, I'm sorry. Those are the bad places, Northwest, North Central, and the West. The exception is the Northeast. You guys call it the Northeast River Breaks over there. The number of quail counted is nearly double what it was last year. Wow. Nevada, slightly different story. And they used to do a really good job accounting chuckers. They've backed off on some of that. Uh, they had a helicopter crash a couple years ago, and that was enough to kind of slow down their enthusiasm. They're still doing brood surveys all over northern Nevada. The, East, the Shoshone Range in Lander County and Western Pershing County are some of the better bird numbers. I'll probably see over there. If you're headed that way, let me know because there's a good chance I'll already be there or be en route. Hope to see you there. Good luck no matter where you're going. Remember, it's not about the dead birds. It's about all that other stuff just as much. Yeah, now it's my turn to reward somebody out there for paying attention and listening to me for so long. If you'd like to win a peat boot dryer, and believe me, you would, <clears throat> just answer the Upland Nation Puzzler question. Message me on Facebook, any of my Facebook pages, I'll check them all. What migratory game bird is sometimes called a mud bat? And if you have any other names for that critter add them to the list I'm compiling. What migratory game bird is sometimes called a mud bat? Good luck. I'll award that boot dryer at the end of the month and then we'll be handing out something else soon thereafter. All right. That is my cue to tell you one more time thanks for listening brought to you in part here by findbirdhuntingspots.com new material this week as well so check it out and that's where you find the upland checklist please tell your friends if you tell one friend we'll continue to grow at 67 percent every six months and leave a review at Facebook, not at Facebook, you know, at Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, please leave a review. You want to talk anytime, go to the Wing Shooting USA or Upland Nation Facebook pages. And if you want to listen to this elsewhere, subscribe at UplandNation.com. Check out the Patreon page as well, patreon.com slash UplandNation. Become a premium member. Take a look at all the benefits you'll get at Patreon, 
com slash Upland Nation. Until I see you in the field, I'll see you here next week. I'm Scott Linden. Thanks again for listening.